Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. Today, as you can see up on the screen, we're going to be talking about Mickey. Uh, there was a little sit-down interview last week between him and Reckless, uh, where they're actually just kind of talking about a lot of things, uh, kind of how they met each other, their history, and then also how they feel about playing with each other together, how they feel about the ongoing season, the future, all that stuff. It was a really cool interview, a really cool interaction, because it seems like these two guys really do get along great. It seems like they have a ton of synergy, and it seems like they are really, really happy together. Uh, and it's just kind of interesting hearing how things went in the past, how they could have been a little bit different, uh, and how maybe with a few different changes here and there, they really could have changed the entire landscape of the LEC. So I thought it was a really, really interesting interview, because I know on this channel, we like to theory craft a lot. We like to speculate, talk about rumor and stuff all the time. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to really kind of think about how the LEC, uh, Mickey's career, Reckless's career, G2's career, Fnatic's career, all that stuff could have potentially changed. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. Hopefully uh, it's fun and uh, uh, hopefully I get your guys' thoughts and feedback as well. But before we get into that, I just want to real quick, if you have not already, make sure you take a second to smash that like button. I would appreciate it so, so much. It really does help me out with the YouTube algorithm, getting my content out to more and more people. Uh, just growing a little bit more would be absolutely awesome. And it's probably the easiest and best way for you to support my channel, uh, you know, if that's something you'd be interested in doing. Also, make sure you subscribe to update on my latest content. Uh, it really works out for the best of us so you don't miss out on any of our videos in the future. Uh, again, if, if you do enjoy my content on my channel with that being said let's get right into this let's see uh what they've got to say this comes from the g2 esports youtube channel player on player with reckless and mickey g2 league of legends again this was from last week uh like three days ago something i didn't get to last week you know we've been we've had a ton of content videos and stuff going on uh but let's get into this one hopefully the the audio is right uh it might be a little loud you know headphone users watch out but uh this is reckless asking mickey uh, when, when did we meet? When was the first time we spoke or talked or whatever? Uh, and this is what Mickey has to say about it. I'm Zon Nicolas. Oh you my gosh, we got an ad. All right, hold on. Five seconds, boys. We got hit with the ad. All right, here we go. Now for real. Out for the Fnatic team in 2016. Yeah. And yeah, that was interesting. Um, because mm -hmm. I was like just a solo key player, so I didn't really talk much at all. And I remember that scrim, I was playing Bard and I was playing Morgana. So I just wanted to pause it real quick and talk for a second that I'm pretty sure it is common knowledge that Mickey did try out for Fnatic in 2016, but it's 2021. Not every single fan that is watching League of Legends now was necessarily around in the scene back in 2016 or necessarily following it that closely uh, or that intently or whatever to know about this. And also, even if you were around 2016, uh, you know, not everyone's a super freak LCS LEC competitive League of Legends nerd and knows every single fact and everything. So while, you know, this might be a little bit of a, re of a review and talking about some obvious stuff that a lot of you guys do already know, uh, you know, keep in mind that not everybody out there is on the same level. Mickey did try out for Fnatic in 2016 obviously they did not take him it did not work out in the end but that's kind of where this whole story starts out is just like man Fnatic was very very close to having Mickey pretty early on and, and that would have been crazy but let's see what else he has to say he's talking about uh how his tryout went with Fnatic how things were going this was obviously when Reckless was on Fnatic so uh you know this is when you know those two guys really started interacting for the first time started building up uh to the relationship they have nowadays and then uh... I was like kind of playing well, but I didn't say a single word. I don't know if I actually said anything the whole game. <laughs> I was just kind of playing my, my game. And then, uh, yeah, I got taken in as a sub because, well, I wasn't really ready for the main stage for LCS back then because I didn't really talk at all. And usually supports have to talk, or at least in the past it was like supports or the shot callers, stuff mm -hmm. like that. I guess, yeah, that was the first interaction that yeah. we actually talked even though I didn't really probably talk much. <laughs> yeah. No, I would have said so again, I, I think it's interesting how Mickey kind of looks back. And again, it's crazy that that's in 2016 and, and we're early 2021 now. You know, we're, we're basically 2020, really, if you want to stretch it and reach a little bit. In four years, it's kind of crazy to see the amount of growth and everything that Mickey has had. Because, I mean, like they talk about a little bit in this interview, uh, Mickey is a veteran player now. And, and for some people, especially for a guy like Reckless, who's been around as long as he has, uh, who's seen Mickey come in, be the young guy, the new guy, and then develop into a veteran, it's a little bit weird to say that yeah mickey's been around for a while now and to see his growth uh in the grand scheme of things four years i mean in esports that seems like forever
whatever. But uh, like in professional sports and stuff, four years, you'd still be considered kind of like a new guy and stuff or relatively new in the scene. Um, so it's awesome to see how far Mickey has come. I'm sure, uh, I mean, I, we know for a fact he feels much more com uh, comfortable, confident, speaking up, talking, shot calling, all that stuff. He's He's been around the block. He's won so many LEC titles. He's competed at MSI, Worlds, all this stuff. And it's crazy to see that just how kind of quick this all happened in a couple of years. Mickey going from this solo queue guy uh, who got offered the sub position on Fnatic in 2016 to everything he's been able to do in Europe and then making his way to G2. And, and it's just really crazy to see. But again, like he said, he was... I'm sure part of the reason why he wasn't talking much was because he was just a solo queue player, so he wasn't used to it. Obviously, you have to uh, get uh, like acclimated to a new situation, a new scenario and everything. But also, he seems like he was a little bit unconfident because even now, he talks about back then, he wasn't ready for the EU LCS. He wasn't ready for the big stages, and that's why Fnatic only offered him the backup position. But Reckless uh, recalls a little bit different uh, side of the story, a little bit different uh, you know, from this situation. A lot of the same stuff, but he has a little bit different of an opinion. So the same. Um, I guess I never heard your story of how it happened, but mine was very similar. I remember as well, you played Bard. I don't really remember the Morgana game, but I very much remember the Bard game because that was the game that got me to go to Daler and say, I think we should get this guy. And then prompted him to say, I don't think he's ready for LCS. And then the whole thing of you being a sub and all. So uh, there, I mean, that's pretty cool to me. That's pretty interesting to hear that. Yeah, these two, obviously they're so connected now, but they've, they've never really heard each other's side of the story. So I thought this was just a great idea for content from G2, uh, a really, really nice idea and a really cool look in for all the fans and just people who want to hear about this kind of stuff. The fact that Mickey, even looking back on it now says, yeah, I wasn't ready for the ULCS. It was probably a fine decision by Fnatic, you know, offered me the sub position. I had so much to learn. I didn't even talk. I probably wasn't even that good of a player, but for reckless to be saying that no i was telling our team we need to get this guy and for him to kind of just notice the talent and potential that mickey had every player coming in has different issues uh and if one of your big things is that maybe your communication is lacking a little bit uh or you just need to gain more confidence or more time or whatever that's what being in a team environment for that's what learning from veteran players like reckless and, and getting that the scrim time the practice time and stage time you know those are those are mistakes that can be easily fixed if you have the talent and the potential and everything uh, then that's a good base. And the fact that Reckless was able to identify so early on in Mickey's career that he was going to be a great player and he was going to be a quality, quality talent, maybe, you know, it, it was just a guess at the time, obviously, but now we've, we've seen how Mickey's careers worked out and then we've seen how things have come full circle and Reckless really, really wanted to team up with him again. Uh, I, I think it was pretty cool. But then obviously the fact that, yeah, Fnatic decided that, you know, he wasn't ready for the ULCS. Mickey definitely agrees. Uh, and it's just kind of interesting how everyone's kind of had a little bit of a different opinion uh, on how a whole, on how this whole situation went down. But then just thinking about Reckless was advocating for this guy, and we assume in the Fnatic organization, Reckless has a lot of pull, he has a lot of say. Obviously, he didn't have the final decision making, especially back then, but just thinking, how would things have changed if Fnatic got Mickey? Fnatic has been historically one of the biggest, best organizations with some of the best results uh, in the LEC, especially historically, maybe not as much recently with G2 kind of taking over, but man, Fnatic with Mickey, Reckless and Mickey getting that much time and, and just uh talent and everything together uh would have been so so exciting and fun to watch obviously stuff worked out pretty well for Fnatic. Uh, they were able to go through a lot of different um rosters and and for the most part they've always been a quality team over the years they ended up you know with hillisang now and for the most part i would i would assume Fnatic fans are pretty happy with hillisang but i mean a lot of people would say that uh, mickey has been a better support than hillisang over the years and and now obviously we've seen a little bit we've only gotten a small taste of what the reckless and mickey bot lane can be they haven't looked so great the last couple of weeks but we know that there is huge insane potential here and especially if these guys had one two three four four years together kind of the insane things they could have done and and how great that could have been for the Fnatic team and how that would have changed other rosters and moves and stuff as well that would have obviously affected the G2 roster what support would they have ended up with how would that have worked out would it have been a support that was good enough to be able to work with perks uh and work with caps and would that perks and caps roster have even come together I, I mean it really could have changed the whole entire landscape of not just the LEC it would have changed really the whole landscape of the world because because we've seen what G2 has then been able to do as far as winning an MSI, making it to a world finals. Like, uh, if G2 would have never worked out exactly this way, maybe they would have never been a team that won MSI or made it to the world final or semifinal or, or really uh, provided kind of that 
just uh, respect and stuff for the LEC and made them look like maybe a little bit better of a league than they really are outside of G2. Um, and also, would Fnatic then have been able to replace them uh, with hanging on to Caps, having Reckless and Mickey, uh, and being one of the best teams in the world? Because, you know, this is a team that in 2018 was in the World Final before Caps decided to leave. Would they have been able to win a world title would they have continued to make it super super deep in the tournament would they still be the best team in the lec would they've just continued to take down trophies and all this stuff uh i mean it's just so fun and interesting to think about uh, and that's even just taking a look at it from g2 and fanatics perspective where we know so many other different rosters careers players and stuff could have changed but i just thought it was really really cool that even back then in 2016 reckless saw something in mickey uh he seemed like he wanted to play with him he was really advocating for him and even though things didn't work out Obviously, these guys have stayed in touch. Obviously, they are big fans of each other. They're very, very respectful for each other. And when you see these interactions, these interviews and stuff, it really seems like they just enjoy each other's company, like they enjoy each other's time, and that they're both genuinely happy and excited for this season. I, I mean, for Mickey, it's got to feel nice kind of playing with a legit AD carry for the first time in two years. It's got to be nice, you know, not having to like teach somebody and kind of walk through the steps and stuff. You just have a veteran guy who you know is going to be rock solid, uh, and you can maybe focus on some other stuff that you want to work on besides, uh, you know, not it's not like hand holding obviously but what he's had to go through the last two years is not obviously the traditional uh, experience for support especially in a top tier team uh, like g2 uh, and it's just really really cool to see and it does seem like this g2 team really gets along well together like they're gonna have awesome synergy and it is still early days in this roster and even though they've had a little bit of a bumpy start to start the season especially uh, with the uh, just dropping that game to Fnatic and everything we'll have to see how it goes but I think people are really really expecting uh, the entire g2 team but reckless and Mickey especially to really develop into one of the best bot lanes in the LEC, one of the best bot lanes in the West, and potentially even one of the best bot lanes in the world. And that's really going to be something really cool to see, follow, and track over the course of the year. But this interview just got me thinking, what could have been? Uh, and I thought that was pretty fun, and I just wanted to talk about that today. But that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Definitely drop a like if you enjoyed it. I would appreciate it so, so much. It really does help me out with the YouTube algorithm, and it's an awesome way to help support the channel. Leave a comment down below. Do you think Fnatic should have taken Mickey in 2016, or do you think uh, everything worked out for the best uh, for all the parties involved? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on anything we talked about in today's video. Subscribe to update on my latest content. Hopefully, I catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.